I'm going to work on a variation of round concave layering. So um, the objective is when we're working with round shapes is for it to be lighter through the front, heavier into the back area. Um, so it uses a, a, a form of over direction or a steeper finger angle so that it gets heavier into the back. Um, round can be um, just following the head shape around, but what I'm looking for is a traditional round shape where it's lighter in the front and gets heavier towards the back. And it's kind of going to end up like that anyway because of the hairline. When we look at the hairline this way, we can see that really we don't really have any of the density in this area or in this area. So, excuse me, what happens is that hairline drops as it moves towards the back. So it's pretty much always going to maintain length anyway. So the differences here is basically we could do round concave layers numerous ways. We could work horizontally this way use an elevation and create the shape getting heavier towards the back by cutting longer, so short to long. Um, we could work it that way. We could work it with vertical sectioning and use elevation and then forward over direction for it to get heavier into the back. Remember, you're either going to cut the angle to get heavier, longer, or you're going to move the hair, i.e. use over direction for it to get heavier in the back. I'm going to choose to do something kind of in the middle of working horizontally and working vertically. What I would like to do is I'd like to remove more weight out of this area. When I work this way, I tend to keep that weight in this area very block, very kind of square. A lot of people tend to call it square even though it's just concave. So what I want to do is I want to take a little bit more of this out through here. So I could work from front to back that way if I want to. But what I want to do is I want to be able to kind of do the same thing on both sides, right? Or we do, we want to make some things balanced and equal. So moving back this way, everything has to be identical. Section size, where you bring the hair, everything. So there's a far greater chance of you not making one side exactly the same as the other side by working that way. If I work that this way, then it's all about my elevation and whether I lift into the first section or whether I lift up to the ceiling or whether I come out here a little bit more. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pivot my sections all the way through from this point right here on the apex. And I'm gonna cut a line to begin with that follows the curvature of the head shape. And that's going to give me my elevation to, for the rest of the haircut as far as what I'm going to cut. I'm not going to go any lower than that spot as I move around the head shape. So that position right there maintains. What I do is I'm going to overdirect hair forward so it's just going to get longer and heavier towards the back. So I'm going to keep that kind of form through. So it's going to be concave. And concave means shorter on the interior, longer on the exterior, so that we can keep the length, but we can remove the weight on the inside. Convex would be everything literally the same length all the way through. So that would actually leave me much more um, weight within the haircut. So, taking my first section, it's going to pivot from this point right here on the top. So this is going to be the guide. And I'm just going to take that and just pull that straight out from the head shape. I'll, I'll turn her around so that you guys can see the elevation a little bit better. So I'm going to work from the inside out. I want this to be on the concave scale of things. So I know that we're going to get longer towards the edge as we move around. But for right now, I'm just gonna copy the contour of the head shape with my layer. So I guess the question is, is where do I cut here so that I know exactly where it falls? So here's what I would do. 
So I take a little piece of that front, let that fall, and cut that where you want it to fall. So where you want your face framing, the shortest hair in the front to start. And then you can use that as your guide and work from that. So again, if you're not quite sure where that's going to fall, I'm just gonna go straight into the inside, go longer than I think. I've done this quite a few times, so I'm going based on experience here. So I'll go longer than the average comb. And I'm just gonna copy the head shape with the angle of my fingers. So again, this is a variation of round concave layering. There's many, many different ways to achieve this particular shape that I'm going to do. And that's the beauty of hair cutting, is understanding that it's three-dimensional and there's so many different ways you can do these things. So as you can see, I'm just pulling that straight out from the head. Now, when it comes to elevation, again, I'm lifting that straight out from the head. And I've cut a line that follows the frontal part of the head shape all the way down. So right now I've got that. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to our next section. And that's now going to start to affect the flow of weight from front to back. So the shape of the haircut. So what we're looking for is we're looking for it to descend and get heavier. Not just with the length and eye outline, but the weight on the inside. The weight on the inside, I could keep level so that the weight line is just parallel to the ground. My outline would still get longer towards the back because that's what the hairline does. So it's what you want to do with that balance of weight on the inside. So I'm going to go with that traditional where we take most of the weight out of the front and we leave a little bit more into the back area. So I'm going to take my second section and it's gonna work from that point again. It's a pivot point. And then I'm going to take the second section and I'm gonna put that into number one. So my body position doesn't change for number one and number two. And the reason is, what I want is I want section number one, my shoulders need to be parallel to that. So I'm facing the first section, not the second section. That will encourage me to push the hair into that first section. So I'm elevating the hair above 90 degrees right now by pushing that up into the first section. So the camera looking at the head shape that you're looking through is showing a different view than what I'm seeing. I'm stood off to the side here. So when I'm looking at this, this is horizontal, this is vertical. So what I'm doing is, I'm not over directing as such just yet. It'll be over direction when I move into more of a vertical diagonal section. Right now it's elevation, I'm pushing two up into number one. That's made two longer than number one. That's the start of a concave layer. So now I take section number three and I pivot out a little bit more. Get rid of what I don't need. Get just the guide section. So I just need the previous section. If I use section number one, I'll just bring everything into number one. And then there's no real point in pivoting around. Pivoting is all about the fluidity. I may as well have just brought horizontal sections and everything into the first section. So now I'm gonna bring this one into this section. So I will now move this off the head shape and again, remember my first section, this was the elevation I used. I'm not gonna drop below this now. And I'm gonna take number three and push that into number two. So again, my shoulders are parallel with the guide. That will encourage me to push into the previous section. If I'm parallel with the, hair, the section that I'm actually cutting, then I'm going to encourage myself to not use over direction. 
So now I'm over directing forward into the previous section. So three is going forward into two. So that makes three longer than two, heavier than two. So I'm starting to create my face frame now, all the way through the front here. And as you can see, once it gets to here, it drops. Well, that's right here at your hairline where it gets to that point and then becomes vertical. So you're, again, like I said, you're always going to have the luxury of getting longer towards the back. So safety mechanism for your length. So again, previous section. So section number two and number one, I don't need them anymore. This is section number three, and that's going to be the guide for this next section in this panel. So my shoulders are facing what I'm cutting into. So my guide right there, I'm facing that. Again, if I twist my shoulders, I twist the hair. It goes to a different place. See how it's moving? So that's going to happen every time. So it's very important that your shoulders are parallel, then your fingers will be parallel. It's this kind of stuff that starts to tweak haircuts and send them in the wrong way. So very kind of structured. So I'm just looking for the guide there. Now I've found that where it is. And again, I'm over-directing forward into the previous section. So now we're just going to cross-check that. Have a visual look at it when it's falling, looks great. So as you can see, I've maintained the length of the mannequin. And that is due to me using an elevation up in this region. I'm pulling away from what I want to keep. So with my elevation, I'm lifting that hair up to pull away from this. And I'm pushing the hair forward to pull away from this back here. So it's going to get heavier on the interior from front to back and from top to bottom. So cross-checking that, Usually we cross-check the opposite to what we've done. So if I've pivoted, the opposite to the pivot is just look at the shape that it creates as you move around. It's curved, right? It's like a clock. So I'm going to take curved section starting in the center and moving down. And I'm going to lift this up to where it was cut. And I'm going to see that it gets heavier towards the back. That's me over-directing each section into the previous. If I would have just followed that head shape with no over-direction, then I would see this through here, much flatter, just like the ceiling. So I'll just check through all of that. It's good to have a good look through. And again, we used elevation, so I'm not gonna just pull sections out like so and look at them. I'm going to lift them up to where it was cut. Really what I'm doing is I'm inspecting the haircut. So you see, nice and clean. If I see anything I don't like, I can just skim over it. I'm in the right place. And then the last bit, I can just lift up again because my elevation was up above that natural round of the head, that being the parietal ridge. And then you can see that's there too. And the round curvature of what's been created. Someone asked, would this work if you wanted the layers shorter and the length still long? Yes, for sure. I mean, you can go as short as you want with that. So we can go quite down to here, but obviously you've got to look at where that length is going to reach up to. When I do this side, I'm actually going to do a variation where I'm going to take the interior shorter, but I want to maintain all of the length. So I'm going to go from your kind of classic round concave layered shape with a face frame into a shorter variation, more like shag kind of pixie world on this side. 
So we'll, we'll address that issue for you. But again, anytime you do something like this, always have a look. See what's going to measure up to where you're elevating to. Plan your haircut and plan ahead. That's what the consultation's for. See, that's the issue with cookie cutting. When you see something that you like and then you do the exact same thing, what you're not taking into consideration is head shape, density, you know, hairline. Now, everybody's got the same size forehead and, and jaw, you know, from their hairline. So things change with how hair falls. So you've got to look at that landscape. So now that that's cross-checked, now I can take this into the back area. So I'll just spray this panel down. And you can see now that I've cut with intent. So this will just dry really nicely, working with this mannequin's texture. There's not much styling that has to be done if you cut the style into the haircut. It makes blow drying so much easier. So now we'll move into the back. So we're still pivoting from that point. It's very important that you stay on that point. So it's really kind of like a needle point every time. Just like the hands on a clock, how they're attached. They always come from that point. So now we move into the back and obviously now the hairline drops much lower. So I know even more now that I am protecting more of this length down here. So that's something that you might want to take into consideration so that you don't make this haircut too heavy in the back. So the, uh, you know, like this being just an over direction into the previous is probably on the kind of lighter scale. Whereas if I was over it in really far forward, then it's gonna get super heavy and long in the back. And remember, it's already long and heavy back there. So you might not need to leave as much weight back there. And vice versa. So here's the guide, right? So all I'm gonna do is stand parallel to the guide and I'm gonna push this forward into that. Just take the previous section. Get rid of this panel now, we don't need that. And we just keep going in the same manner. So what's great about this is it doesn't change too much. So relatively simple thing to do. So that we're not all over the place jumping dancing around we're just literally pivoting with the haircut as we move around keeping it nice and simple the section in again into the previous so i stand parallel to the previous so my shoulders are facing that section and i push forward into the previous find the guide there it is would you cut curly hair exactly the same? I would, I would. I would definitely cut it with this clean, precise shape. Because then I'm going to get clean, precise results when it falls. Um, if I want something that's more separated and more textured, as far as looseness, um, then it's going to do the same thing as if I was to cut this haircut with a lot more space inside it as well. It'll fall and look good for a period of time, then gravity is going to start to take over as those peaks and valleys get longer and heavier. So it depends on what you're really looking for in the, in the look as far as when cutting the cur curly textures of hair. Because I could do the same thing uh, with this as well. So again, into the previous. So as you can see, I'm, I'm pivoting with the haircut. I'm making sure that I face the guide every single time as I work through this.
And as you see, most of the hair that's below the natural round of the head starts to drop away. So we're pulling away from what we want to keep in both dimensions. So vertically, I'm lifting the hair up to keep the length, and horizontally, I'm pushing that hair forward for that to get heavier towards the back. That's the beauty of hair cutting. It's all that movement and finger angles that create the haircut. So, on the, we've got a couple of things coming up. We've got, um, well, we've got one thing coming up, don't we? We've got the July 10th. Uh, we're going to do a virtual hands-on class on July the 10th, and it's for our KDF members. Um, and what that means is if you're a member on my or our private education page, Knowledge Destroys Fear, you get to take the class with us. Now that doesn't mean that you're a subscriber to my Instagram page, that's completely different. So if you want to become a member, it's currently $150 for the year. And that is where we put all of our video education and that's where we usually do all of these lives. And it's not just myself, it's Katie and Kelly as well. And it's where all, you know, the curriculums that I've written in the past are too. So there's the Paul Mitchell curriculum in there, there's the Sassoon one in there, and there's all the stuff in between that I've done. Anyway, we're going to do a live virtual hands-on class. So it just it gives you an opportunity, especially if you don't live anywhere near where we are, then it's a great opportunity for you to take a class with us. And we're all going to be involved in it. So it'll be a three haircut class basically myself katie and kelly and that's on july 10th and that is free to our kdf members so if you want to join you can join by following the link in my bio and um, there's a link tree link and you'll see my instagram private page membership it's 29 dollars a month or right now you can get the whole year for $150 and that just gives you access to everything that we do. So that's it. And so here's, here's the shape, beautiful shape, where we can see we've got the front taken out, that corner. So this is what happens when you do round layered shapes. It takes out this front corner through here, so it opens up this window, but it closes this window. Now if we were to do triangular, it opens this window and it closes that window. If we were to do something that is level all the way around, so no over direction forward, no over direction backwards, keep our weight line low, then that's gonna fill in this area and this area. And same thing with a square shape, it's going to leave more weight here and more weight in the back. What it will do is it will kind of drop into those corner areas. So if you want something that's very even, don't cut square shapes. Square shapes will definitely get heavier towards the corners, so they have those peaks. So that's a really cool variation of working with round concave. Now on the other side, I want to do something very similar, showing you that this sectioning pattern is very universal, and you can use it for many different shapes. So you can see my shape into the back getting heavier. I just want to say really quick that this haircut is such a money maker in the salon that because of the sectioning pattern and it can be used on all different textures of hair and density of hair. It, and lengths, right? And lengths, totally. This, this will... This is like a really good variation of the shag. Yes. So if I go shorter with that initial layering, which I'm going to do on this side, you'll now see how that layering not only shortens, but it starts to expand and shrink into the head shape more. But yeah, lovely kind of intermediate shape, I would say that one is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Very salon friendly totally. variation of it. So that's what's great, you know, I like to do all these different variants of it. Lately I've been doing a variation of this where I start in the back and end in the front and it, it does the same thing. Um, but I love all the different variants and that's why we like to show you how simple hair cutting can be. We don't have to overcomplicate it. So let's do this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to section off this again. 
I don't want to lose that middle pivot point. It's very important that each head, each section starts on that point. If it at all moves from that point, then the fluidity of the haircut disappears. And that's the whole point in pivoting. It's fluidity. It's to create that kind of radial shape in the haircut. We have one question about the back of this one. Yeah. Um, when you cut the back, do you pick up the whole section or can you half it? As far as the length of it this way, mm -hmm. remember you're only going to cut from here to here anyway. So what doesn't get cut kind of bunches up in here or it drops away because I'm pulling away from what I want to keep. So I like to personally see where my length is. I don't want to just take a little bit here and a little bit there and then, oops, I'm cutting you know, a bit of my length off. So for me, I know, common sense tells me I'm working from here to here. That's the only area that I'm going to cut. What's from there, not bothered about that. So it just depends on how comfortable you feel handling hair. And we're all different. So yes and no <laughs> is the answer to that. Do what you want, basically. How, whatever works for you. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to take the underneath of the parietal ridge right there and I'm going to section that away. So the idea is for me to not to not to cut that. We're going to keep that. So I'm going to work through pretty much the same way. So I'm going to pivot from front to back. And now I'm going to go shorter. So I'm parallel to this part of the section. And I'm going to cut a line that again follows the curvature of the head shape. And again, I'm working from the inside out. Because at any moment, I could change to leave my length. If I work from the length in, it's too late, I've already cut it. And I have a far greater chance of building weight onto the inside then, if I work that way. So I'm choosing to cut the weight out of the haircut. there so just have a look see where that is going to fall boom right there on that cheekbone so we'll go with that so now we just work through the same way. Now on this one, I'm not looking to over direct the hair into the previous section. So I'm going to want to stand and bring my fingers somewhere in the middle of this section, not pulling it into the previous. Now keep in mind, I will have the tendency to do that because my arms are attached to my body, so they always end up coming towards my body, right? So I just have to make sure that that's not happening. And in the real salon world, I would be using the mirror to help me with this, to make sure I'm not over-directing that area. If I over-direct, it gets heavier towards the back. We had a question. Yeah. Um, it says, what type of hairline would you not do this on? Uh, probably really strong widow's peak, where we don't have much hair in here. Generally tends to be on guys more than girls, I would say. Um, but yeah, that's probably a, an area I would I'd want to avoid because, again, we're taking more weight out of this area where in the front and we're leaving it more in the back. 
So you might want to work the opposite kind of shape if you're trying to fill this area in. Although sometimes when you do go shorter, it allows that area to actually be fuller and, and fill that area in more. So go short or go long. I think that middle ground probably doesn't work with receding hairlines. Maybe a hard side part wouldn't necessarily work either. Yeah, because yeah. you're really going to open up that area, aren't you? Yeah. Hence, I don't use side partings on myself because I have that widow's peak. So it'll look like I have no hair in this area <laughs> if I have a side parting. So you think of it the same exact premise here. I think we're going to do that next time. Please, as my hair dresser. <laughs> Side part. Side part. Give me the old Damien. So working through. No over direction this time. And just using that previous as the guide. Yeah, let's uh, turn it around. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Just tell me to move next time. I can fit. She's tiny. The salon's open. Yeah. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Busy day. So I can see. Yeah. Cute. Mm -hmm. So if I would have overdirected that into the previous, we would see this going on getting much heavier towards the back. So, just a little cross check. Um, someone asked, why aren't you over directing like the first section? Uh, doing something different on this side, I'm showing you a different variation uh, when we teach, we like to show you more than just one thing so you can see differences with weight and different over directions. So on this side, I'm choosing to follow the head shape around um, and not use over direction so that the weight doesn't descend into the back too much. So I'll continue now that same thing into the back. So I will also do the same with this, I'll take that piece. So as you can see, what's happening is I'm choosing to layer just the top area. And leaving this weight down here to protect it. The idea is to work into that afterwards. So just going and removing the weight first. Remember, weight removes from the top and it affects this. So that's where I want to start to remove the weight and then I can whittle through this afterwards. So we'll just continue with the same process, just using the previous as the guide. And now we'll move into that. So the key thing really is to keep it clean with your sectioning so you know exactly where you're elevating and over directing to. And you know what your guide is. Someone says your front part looks like a feather. Yeah, it's definitely feathering back. It's layered. Um, layering is, is basically what feathered means. Um, modern day terminology would be curtained. But they all mean layered. Layered means a removal of weight. So to get this to do that, you have to remove the weight through here, right? You have to have those layers to do that. So again, understanding the removal of weight versus buildup of weight and how over direction will affect as well. But that tucks in so nicely. Yeah, right on that yeah. natural ridge, of that cheekbone ridge of the head shape. Feathers back. It's so nice. Blowing you away. The feathers are blowing. <laughs> uh -huh. So again, from the pivot point. So this particular haircut I'm doing right now, I posted on my page uh, yesterday, last night. So 
I wanted to kind of share the process of it and why. And that. So basically, it's a pixie. That's what I'm doing. I'm closer to the head shape and I'm pivoting around. And whether I use over direction or not, basically determines whether it's that kind of pixie shape or not. And whether I leave disconnections. So I'm kind of on the edge of a pixie and a shag here. If I took that front away, then we'd be in kind of that mullet region. So I still have options here with the, uh, the outcome of this. Someone asked, would this still work if you point cut? Yeah, definitely. Great question. What if I point cut this? I'm choosing to cut blunt. So I have to make sure that everything's on it. My over direction, my elevation, because I'm choosing to cut this perfectly clean and precise. So the grow out factor with this would be affected by how clean it is. So if I now come, or, or if, if I to start with do this, then I'm adding a little bit more forgiveness. I'm adding some space inside of things. So you can do a lot more movement than that. When you cut it precise, you, you're literally allowing it to fall and that's it. When you put space in, you can mold it and move it around a little bit easier than that. So again, it's all effect and what you want to achieve. We've got a couple of questions about your scissors. Okay. Um, what scissors are you using? All right, questions about the scissors. So the scissors I'm using today are made by Joel. And Joel is a, gosh, they've been around forever. Um, very classic Japanese scissor company. Um, they're available through Hair Art, so Hair Art Products, if you want to go to their page. Um, they're the Joel Cobalt. Yeah, these, these are the Joel Cobalt's 5 inch, because that's my preference, right? At this particular moment, I've kind of gone back to my roots. Skinny little blades. Skinny ones, tiny. They remind Fantastic. me of the old Sasun Matsuzakis, even though they're Joel's. So look, now when I look at the balance of this weight, we're in a very similar area where these are falling. If I would have over directed forward through here, this would be much lower. We'd be pushing the weight into this area, but I'm not interested in having this kind of backpack weight area in the back here of the haircut. So that's why I've gone shorter and I've also changed my over direction compared to the other variation on the other side. So now it's, it's all about what do we do with the exterior? Well, you could leave it. You know what I mean? Proper disconnect. It works, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing that. So it actually makes this much leaner. We've made that face skinnier. So you can see how it pops into that kind of shy world. Now I'm going to put some, some connection into there. So all I'm going to do is to work through, excuse me, with vertical sections. So there, there, there's that, right? So I don't necessarily want to cut that so blunt. So I'm going to come through vertically and I'm going to work from that out to the length. Could use a razor. You kind of pick the instrument you want to play with. So you could, remember, you could play guitar, or you could play piano, or you could play the drums, the bass, play the flute. <laughs> right, Katie? <laughs> You and Lizzo. We're the same. Number one world's flute player. Flute players. I'm a flautist. So, just in case you didn't know that, <laughs> one of Katie's fun facts. I can read music. She can read music and play the flute. Wow. We've not seen it yet, though, but we're, we're going to do. One day. 
So again, guys, just coming through. Vertical sections. Super freehand now. So not expecting solid, clean lines here at all. Very visual. I'm just working from that interior out to the length. So I could use razor to do this if I wanted to. Again, you pick the instrument you want to use and play with. Someone asked for the top part. Um, were you cutting 90 degrees? Straight out from the head shape, exactly. And then leaving that underneath the parietal ridge out. So I'm just straight out from the head shape, no over direction on this. I could use some over direction if I wanted to really mullet this out, but my interior isn't like that. This interior doesn't get longer, so it makes no sense for me to pull this forward. I won't get the right connection. Fluidity is key in haircuts. It's got to go and move with and live with that person. So just some real cool variations on round concave layers. One side working longer, of course, pivoting all the way around, but using an over direction. So we have that quintessential round concave layering. Someone asked, how do you know where to start and where to stop when making your slice? So you cuts? see, there's, there's the layers. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at where those layers are and that's the disconnected piece right there. So all I'm doing is I'm going from that. So I go past it, just like I would with a razor and there it is. And I can see and, and can feel in there the difference between those two areas. And I'm just gently working through. And you can see how these lengths are shorter and those get longer. That's the concave on the inside. So um, this is not going to be a very precise concave. So we're not going to look through this and cross check that like we did the top. I'm not expecting it to react the same. So the strength of the haircut is through the layering through this area in the top and then much softer as it blends from those layers into the outline. Remember, two relationships to a haircut, the technical and the visual. So I can see all that weight on the inside. So that's what I'm literally just scooping out. And as I'm going through, I'm doing this. I'm not closing it because that will just chop it off and I'm not dragging through. I'm wiggling through so that it cuts nicely. Just like the razor, it's all about the pressure that you put on the hair. And someone asked, um, would you cross check with horizontal partings? So this, like I actually just took, said, mentioned that one. So up here, definitely taking curved, they're not horizontal, they're curved. See, if you pivot around, if I pivot around, that's circular, it's radial. So that's what it's creating. So you must cross check it that way to check what you've created through that radial sectioning. So through the top, yes, I cross check very technically, which you saw me do. And then through the underneath, totally visual. If I cross check through here, I'm going to see peaks and valleys everywhere. There's going to be no clean lines because that's not how I cut it. So as you can see, this is starting to take on a different look much closer to the head shape with the volume. Bit of stuff in the hair. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's tutorial. It's been a while since we've been on my page. We've been busy traveling all over America and things, teaching. Uh, we just had a great time in uh, Orlando last week. Thank you to everybody that turned up to our class to see us cut hair and uh, took our hands-on class. Thank you everybody for becoming members of our private page and again, become a member and you can take our next class which is July 10th uh, virtually and uh, yeah, 
I'll uh, post some pictures of this afterwards with the product and it's all finished.